Importance of correct approach with rotating instruments, if the dentist has a clear mental picture of the planned crown preparation, and is aware of the design of the various diamond stones it may be possible to limit the number of burrs required to two or three types. The following are the diamond burrs used for abutment preparations. The student should remember the shape and the usage of each diamond burr to facilitate the preparation procedures. Burrs are described by the basic type the size of the working tip, and length. SS stands for short shank. Brassler USA diamond burrs and discs are available in sterile and non-sterile models under various trade names with numerous head diameters and working lengths. The devices are reusable and are sterilized using steam sterilization. Do not use chemical or dry heat to sterilize Brassler USA diamond burrs or discs as these processes have not been validated for use. Do not use worn out or dull burrs. Do not apply excessive pressure on the burr, as this could cause undesirable heat, or may cause the burr to fail. Ensure the burr is fully seated and securely gripped in the handpiece call it prior to use. Move the burr continuously, when in use to avoid localized heating and or damage to the burr. Maintain handpieces in good working condition to ensure maximum effectiveness of the device. This slide illustrates the correct orientation of the burr. A maxillary bicuspid in normal alignment is to be prepared for an all-ceramic crown. The entire buccal surface is going to be reduced 1 point to 1.5 mm and should terminate in a shoulder which is 1.0 mm wide and forms a 90 degree angle with the long axis of the tooth. The buccal cut should converge slightly to the occlusal. The diamond burr with a design that is best suited for this type of reduction is the flat end, tapered burr. The burr is held parallel to the long axis of the tooth during its use. The flat ended tapered diamond burr has been used for the buccal reduction. The design of the burr and by holding the stone parallel to the long axis of the tooth assures the dentist of a cut, which meets the requirements for this step of the preparation. The flat end of the burr creates a flat shoulder finish line, and the taper of the burr establishes the necessary convergence to the occlusal for the line of draw, without undue loss of retention. Using the flat ended taper diamond burr, but with a slight divergence palatally from the long axis of the tooth, it is unavoidable to create an unacceptable undercut on the buccal surface. Again the same is used but this time it is tilted too far buccally during the reduction of the tooth structure. This divergence from a line parallel to the long axis of the tooth will result in over-tapering of the buccal cut, with loss of retention and possible injury to the pulpal tissues. The illustration shows lipping of the finish line, by reducing the tooth more than half the width of the tapered round burr. A K-type burr is used to remove the lip.